Be fair. You're, gonna try, oh, you're gonna try it. You should try it this week. Joe Tito, no. I, try to do yeah. I would. I would never disrespect the people who who decided to download this for some reason by impersonating the, the incomparable Joe Tito's voice. Or watching it on YouTube. Yeah, I'm glad you guys get to look at these pretty fit, these glorious mugs, infinitely <laughs> too close to a camera. Well, you know, it's it's they're gonna get what they're gonna get. Old days. This is the old day this episodes, is, man. This is us keeping it real, son. You know, we're. we're with a no makeup podcast. <laughs> who's the who's the makeup podcast? Uh, I mean, I think Pick we both one. know that. I think Nag we both news. know that. News. Well, they, you know, they're all beach blo- having beach blondes now in their in their group now. So, do they? I don't know. I'm not keeping up. I bro, I have so many. I've just gotten into. Hi everybody, how you doing? I just got into uh, the show. Yeah, you know, you know. Uh, you I know just got into. I just got into muting phrases on Twitter. Okay. So I don't see, I don't see like massive scores of conversations anymore. So I have no idea what, what, whatever everyone's arguing about. Like, I'm just, I'm out on all of it. I assume they're not arguing about. Yeah, what, are, what are, what are people arguing about now? No, I muted it. I muted all of it for a reason. I'm not having any discussions about anything that anything that everyone feels the need to argue about on Twitter right now is gone from my life. All of it. Yeah. It's great. I, I mean, it's, it's one, it's one thing, the beautiful thing. And the, the, I guess, you know, the, the curse of just having all galaxy people as like your, your content feed, because mm-hmm. that's where you curated it with, like I did, where if you follow me and I see that you have like LA galaxy or you tweet about them or whatever, then I'll follow you back. Uh, and then I'll it's f- just, then it's all galaxy all the time. You're like, okay, that's cool. Until it's like the mass. Until something goes wrong. Yeah. Or something's not going right. And so then, then it's just like, Oh. Okay. I follow people back. I follow people back until, I mean, it's, it's hypocritical for sure, but until your until your feed is like mostly negative all the time. And then at that point, I'm like, ah, I got to tap out and like, I'm not going to comment. I'm not going to be like, you're negative. Like you shouldn't do this. I just like silently unfollow you and move on with my life, which I think I, is what everyone should do. Yeah. I feel like it as it should be. Right. Yeah. Just, just, you know, you, you can, we talked about it. You control the energy that you bring into your life and that you keep in your life. Um, Would you say that you're controlling your narrative? No. <laughs> in general for Sorry, my that, life. No, that's like, that's like a joke for like five people who listen to the show. That's a, oh, I don't even, I don't even get that joke. Yeah. It's great. No? I don't know. I have no idea what that is. Do you want it's, to explain it to me? It's the uh, wrestling company that. Uh, East oh and yeah. Stroman yeah. Yeah. Started. I, I do know about yeah I, I knew about that and I still don't know about it yeah uh, no one does no one does I'm gonna I'm gonna mute that phrase right now <laughs> oh yeah yeah you should you should I assumed um, it was a galaxy thing everybody's pissed off everyone's mad about everything yeah yeah I muted that phrase too the one everyone's all mad about I muted the shit out of that mm, mm-hmm. it doesn't affect me like it it just doesn't affect me so I'm like what do I care why do I need it. It's just bringing more neg. Hi everyone, but it just brings more negativity into my life for some and, shit that doesn't. I mean, you know. justified or not, like they they're going after that poor woman. Personally, like, it's personally. crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> like no matter what, like this is the, you're kind of breaking the the number one rule that like should be in all fandom is don't be a dick. That's Lars's rule. There, that's not everybody's rule. That's Lars's rule, and that rule doesn't even get followed. No. But it's like it's really? it's the it's the old Lars rule. You know, you're not supposed to be a dick. Um. But, you know, that's what they want to do. That's cool. That's their business. It's got nothing to do with me. I just feel bad for her, you know. Log out. It doesn't exist. It's not real. None of it's real. <laughs> like, if you don't like anything someone says to you on Twitter, like, block them and they go away forever. Uh, if if you see a whole bunch of things on Twitter you don't like, sign off and put your phone down for, like, two hours and it goes away. Like, it's not real. <laughs> yeah. If, you, if she goes to a game and someone, like, throws an egg at her face, that's like, a whole different conversation. And don't do that. But that's, like, this is a whole different conversation. People are mean to her on Twitter. Like it's weird. It's really. Weird. I saw someone uh, was it like put a put her head on someone on a gif of someone else. Was like that's fucking strange. Why would you do that? 
because you couldn't get a ticket to a game? Like, what are you, what are you doing? You're a human being. Like, you're a person. Forget whatever you think about her. Like, you're a you're a grown up. <laughs> you're not supposed to do shit like this. But you know, hey, whatever. I don't I see mean, it anymore. Because for me, it's it's starting to. I mean, and it's whatever you want to call it. You know, PC lefty, whatever. Blah blah blah. It's really getting to like borderline bullying territory with some of the stuff that's going on with like yeah, her well. stuff. This is whenever there's the argument that bullying works. I say the same thing. It's like, well, you're, yeah, it does because it makes the other person feel like shit. That's why yeah. it's, that's why it's effective. You're not supposed to want other humans to feel like shit if you can otherwise avoid it. But you know, and that's isn't, their life. isn't isn't the point of this to whole like have like a discourse and like that's why they're on Twitter. They're on Twitter so that you can you can have a comp. I, I don't care. I don't give a shit. But they're they it doesn't matter. You guys do whatever you want. It's it seems insane that like you're bothering these people personally about the job they're doing. But you know, whatever. Like I said, it just it to me I go back to being like, wow, I just kind of feel bad for her with like Yeah. This stuff that's because you're a human being and you're empathetic, like you should you should. But you know I'm usually yeah. a robot to these things, but I just you know Yeah, it's whatever let's talk about something more controversial tucker dr strange i know we both went to see it this weekend we're, yeah we're, no spoilers no spoilers but well the internet code is the internet code of silence is down they have until monday uh, i'm so, not i'm not going to go out yeah i'm not going to go out trying to spoil people yeah. but like the, the cone of silence is down like you, you, at this point if you got however long this is to listen to this you, you could have gone to see that movie I if just, it was a big enough deal i had a real like self nerd hatred moment going on with the person that was sitting next to me. Oh, who'd you go with? Can, uh, so can no, you say? I, went, I went with my wife, but it wasn't her that I was talking about. I'm talking about the dude who's sitting next to me, like some rando. Oh, like the people. Yeah. 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 And it just made me, it made me see my, see my, my North Carolina sweet tea over here. Oh, there you go. That's, that's how we roll. I got the, I got the, roll sweet in the NC, baby. Southern, Southern California water. There you go. <laughs> But uh, sorry, you're, I I I I, I uh, threw you it, off. It just made me appreciate the times where we could just stream a movie at home and not have to deal with other people. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's just so so the guy, you know, and again, I said self hate, like nerd, like thing that went on because in the movie it's like a multiverse thing where so there's different pl- there's different universes, and so when they're talking about the numbered universes, the, she goes, "Oh, it's the eight two three or eight three eight universe or whatever." And the guy next to me is like, oh, they're from the 616 universe. I'm like, shut up, nerd. Yeah. Shut up, me. nerd. <laughs> like, you have to say that out loud. Who are you, like, impressing in this movie theater with your, like, well, oh, they're from the 616 universe? Yeah, well, there's there's no person he could say that he could say that to who wants to hear it unless he took his mom. Yeah. Like, if he took his mom, his mom would be like, oh, my gosh. Like, you know, I'm going to name him Brian. Brian really knows these oh, movies. Oh, see, I was... For some reason, I was going to go with a Brandon, but that's your brother's name. So I didn't. Yeah, don't, don't. My brother doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> my brother couldn't care less. Like, he'll watch those eventually. Or it'd be um, like a Tyler. Hey, Tyler. Like, that's impressive, Tyler. Yeah. See, Tyler's a type of name. I was going to say Tyler's a kid's name. Tyler's a type of name of someone who would go to that movie with their mom. So it, it, it that's works. What I, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, it works. <laughs> uh, I, I, went, I went alone because Jonas is still back home with Erica. And it was really weird. He's your like a uh, comic book movie. He's my Marvel. Movie. He's my Marvel yeah. dude, man. Yeah. I've seen, I think every Marvel movie since the first Dr. Strange with him. Um, and, and well, that and Eternals. Cause I still haven't seen that one or black widow. I haven't seen that either. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he told me I'm cool on both of those. He was like, this is, this is where I've cultivated my relationship with Jonas. So he sees Eternals and black widow without me. And he's like, dad, first off, I want to apologize because I saw Eternals without you. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, also, you're good. Yeah. I was like, really? He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, you're good. Yeah, don't, don't, don't worry about that. You're, you're, you're all right. Yeah. yeah. And then I guess Black Widow as well. He was like, uh, but then he saw, he saw the Wonder Woman movie without me, the second one. And that one, he was like, yeah, I got what I deserve seeing that. And I was like, yeah, you did. Cause I would have told you it was trash if you had asked me. And I didn't even see it yet. Yeah. But I, I saw, I saw it solo and, uh, yeah that might this might be it for me this might be the moment where i'm like i gotta get a really nice tv and i just wait until i can stream them at home yeah I just, I, it just made me pre- like i just 
wanted to go back to the days of being able to just buy it at home for twenty dollars and I can't be able to stream it for like twenty four hours. Jonas is my but. You know what the problem is? I went. Is this the mistake I made? I went on Friday, and so it was. You know, it's still like the new movie. Everybody's opening going day. to see it. Technically, yeah. opening day kind of thing. Yeah. So the theater was full, but usually when I go with Jonas, I have a buffer on at least one side because <laughs> I like him. Like I like Jonas, and he, Jonas talks him. He's read all the books and all that. He's a, he's a type of dude who's like, "Oh, our uni- our our multiverse is a six one six And I'm like, "Okay, you know, I like you, so I'm not gonna get angry about this." But I was like suffocated on both sides by these fucking morons whose heads I wanted to crush. And it's Friday, and like I had just finished work, and my Friday at work was really stressful. So I'm already like at my wits end and I got these two fucking people on either side of me talking and I'm just like, can you two kill each other so that I can watch this fucking movie in peace? And, and apparently the answer was no. And then I didn't enjoy the movie. So it only got worse. I don't even know if I didn't like the movie or if I was so angry at them, yeah. it ruined the movie for me. Uh, no, you probably didn't like the movie. That's, that's probably it wasn't nice. great. I, I, I disliked most of the characters and made it hard. Uh, so, and then there's a second part where, so one of the characters, um, is the young lady in the movie and you know they don't America know america chavez yeah so they don't know her name and then they you know eventually ask him oh what's your name and the guy next to me is like oh it's america chavez it's like shut up nerd <laughs> they're going to see it right now what do you need to answer the question for yeah you're just being a dick you're being he's a pick me guy he's a guy like oh look i know all the stuff so that's pick why I, I was like i'm like i had a real like self-hatred nerd like moment he's one of like, your people yeah, he's one of my people so I'm, and i'm but so you know, if I get excited in a movie, like I make like, oh, that's cool, or like, oh, well, cool. Like, I'm not gonna go, oh, well, this is an issue number uh, from September 25th of, of 2006. Like, shut up, nerd. You know, uh, to that guy's defense, like, if 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 you can pull out a date, you've dedicated your whole life to this. Like, this is this is his Super Bowl. This is all he lives for. He lives for Doctor Strange two and the Multiverse of Madness or whatever the fuck it's called. Like he's got nothing else. Say he took a girl to this movie. If he can pull that out, what else does he have? But the fact that he knows like this is six one six. He pulls he's that's the only thing he's pulling out that night. If that's what he's <laughs> you know. Oh, I assume he's gonna pull something out later. <laughs> Alone. Well, yeah, that's true. In the dark, in his multiverse of madness. But you you didn't like you didn't like the flick. You didn't you didn't dig it. No, man. It was Sam, it was the worst elements of a Sam Raimi movie. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It's pretty rough. Like I it's and I told I told you that that night I came back home. I was like, the one positive I can take from this is that people can stop wasting their time on asking for a fourth Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man four. Yeah. Run it back. Run it back. Stop, baby. We're good. Just <laughs> stop asking for it because it's not gonna be it won't be good. It won't be it won't there were be parts. Good. There were parts that I dug. Like I, I yeah, dug yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. T- like Terminator like horror movie elements. Like yeah. it, was, it was cool. I dug that. I, I like the Terminator parts. I like the uh I like the the magic, whatever. Like, you know, it's always it's weird at this stage of my life to watch uh what's his name? Benedict Cumberbatch and the woman, um uh Elizabeth Olsen. Like to watch which characters do the like like throwing gang signs because all the music ninjutsu well all the music i listen to is these like chicago and florida drill rappers so i look at hand signals and Why, it they're is, all they're all busting out the ynw melly like hand signals oh no it's it's all about uh what's his name it's all about young though today ysl gang going down on a rico charge but that's that's a that's a different podcast that's another podcast we're <laughs> yeah. Start, yeah um but yeah it's just i couldn't i couldn't stand the main girl america chavez um yeah, it's just it might be over for me. I think it's not that the, it's not that it's bad. I think it's just over for me. Um, because it, it was like he's at the end of the movie, he's giving the speech to the girl, and he keeps hitting, he keeps yeah. hitting the the note of yeah, like don't, don't, America. No, no, yeah, no. I, we, let's not give. Well, I'm not gonna give this. I'm not gonna give the speech, but like he keeps hitting the he keeps hitting the note that her name is America, and like he's giving this speech to America and how America is gonna persevere. And I'm just like, oh my fucking god, man! Are you serious? Like, I can't mute any phrases in this movie. I just need you. I just, I'm just, I'm trying to watch a movie about I magic. Think, I think, I think and, that was my, and stones and shit. I think my whole issue was that it just, it all seemed so thrown together. Like the music was bad, and it's Danny Elfman, so you're like, okay, yeah. it should be all right. But it's like I didn't pay attention to the music. I'll be honest with you. Random like guitar riffs in the like, like in a random like. Everyone spot. liked, you know the the music, the music fight, like whatever. But you know the, the like. 
I hated that it. Was Everyone so I know is it like, so it's so stupid. great. It was so stupid. Uh, it's and look again, if you if you're into the Marvel movies, if you like the strange and all that, it's a cool flick. Lower your expectations drastically, and I think you'll enjoy it. But if you go in with like the level of hype that that movie had, I just I don't I don't know, man. I think it it it, it might be it for me. What's next? What are they doing after this? Thor? See, I like Thor. I might be back. I, I see. That's well, a thing. I'm gonna go see the fucking next one because they always. Here's, but here's the thing with that one. It has it's Taika Waititi who's gonna be amazing, and he's a great writer. He's a great director. What does he do? What has he done? Something I like. Uh, well, he did the last Thor, the uh, Ragnarok. Which I didn't was, like that as much as everybody else. No, did. really. I thought that and was, I, no, no, no. I I liked it. I didn't like it as much as everyone else did. It's it's very rewatchable. Like you can go back and watch it. All right, maybe like, I gotta check it out again. Yeah. Um, but where the what's the one? He's done a bunch of stuff. Um, like really good stuff. Like you should check him his movies out. Let me take a look. Yeah, he. I'll I'll look at it. I'll the, I'll, I'll dig into him. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's see what this guy's into. Um, really funny. He was. Did you watch um what's that one? Uh, the guy movie, the one that was recently came out with the uh, Ryan Reynolds. No, whatever it is. Free I guy. See it. Free guy. Free guy. Yeah, I saw the Adam Project. That's a different movie than you're that's talking a, about. So. That's another, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that Ryan Reynolds. That is Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, that is Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, uh, we're having a Reynolds sons. Reynolds sons. Yeah. Oh, you know, I look. I, I, I was almost there. I almost got it. Oh, did he do the live action Akira movie? Or oh, he's man. going to, or something? Oh, he's got an upcoming Akira. Okay, that's different. Then all right, whatever. I'll check it out. Yeah, but it, it was it was cool. There's some like. There's some awesome moments that were, I think you could telegraph. And even when they still showed it, I was like, hell yeah. Like, you know what I'm talking about? The, like the reveal. Oh yeah. 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 I went, even when, even though I knew it was coming when, when they showed that character, I was like, fuck yeah, let's go. Like it's, it's time. Like I'm back so, in. So Denise had to go to the restroom and missed all that. I'm like you miss you missed the best part of the movie. Missed the best part, yeah. Like the, the, that seven minutes was the best part of the movie, and you missed it. Like, did your your dude who was sitting next to you? Did he shout out the living tribunal scene? No. Uh, he don't know no fucking. He don't know no books. He knows bullshit. He knows he knows bullshit car, uh, cartoons. He ain't read no books. He living. They showed living tribunal, and I was like, oh my god, my testicles descended further. Because well, I was they, so they, into that. Because they also showed that in back in the the Loki series. Did you watch that? Hmm. They had that. They had them there too. So they're really like. You should have known. That guy's a loser. He's not. It's probably level. the. It's probably the dude. Who's, <laughs> you got. You should have told Denise. You should have leaned over and been like, "That's Living Tribunal. That dude don't know comics. You don't know dick. <laughs> Fuck that dude." All right, no. let's 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 get into some galaxy. We've, we've talked enough nerd and and internet bullshit. So let's uh, let's move on a little bit. Uh, some galaxy news before we uh, we move on. We haven't been this is like two weeks notice or two weeks uh, since we last recorded. Uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, we signed Chase Gaspar uh, from Minnesota United uh, in a. Is trade. that how you pronounce it, Gaspar? Gaspar, 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 Gaspar. Because Gaspar. Gaspar. Uh, I still have Chad Gaspard on the mind. <laughs> so Chad Gaspard is a, is a wrestler or former wrestler. Time. R.I.P. Uh, and so I in the notes I wrote it as Chad Gaspard. And and Tucker sent me a gif of the wrestler. I'm like, oh my bad. That's how I get yeah. uh, uh, Chase yeah, Gasper. I think it's Chase Gasper, Gasper uh, mm-hmm. from Minnesota United uh, in exchange for 450 thousand in GAM uh, in tw- in 2020 2023. So next year's GAM. If sure. if uh, Damian Calhoun is is to be correct, uh, just to be uh, believed, yeah, suspect yeah. Damian Calhoun. And then the Galaxy will also send a conditional. <laughs> 300,000 in GAM if certain performance metrics will are uh, achieved. So there was that there was that CAM TAM money everyone was was uh was wondering if we were going to spend inside the league like cool spent on left back. Well apparently that's I I that's not the money that they're going to use. We got more we got more dollars. All right. Yeah. Uh but another left back which goes into the next news which uh Jorge Fania is actually is uh, officially placed on the season ending injury list. Uh, so sorry to hear that about, about, uh, about Biafania, but you know, apparently it's like a worse injury than we, why are you laughing? Well, cause like, it's a weird segue. 
because I want to be like, hey well, man, le- great, let great on Gasper. Well, I want to be like, hey man, great on Gasper, but the the it's tied together as like, hey, by the way, this veteran soccer player, his knee is torn to shit. It's, he's it's, never, it's, he's it's, probably it's, never gonna play again. <laughs> You know, this is I'm summarizing Vanny, but he was like, that shit's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, dude. So uh, yeah, it's not great. Uh on 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 the chase side, uh everyone who's in the know of, of Major League Soccer and, and watches Minnesota seems to think he'll be a pretty good pickup for us. Um I like it because if he's a starter, it's gonna allow Raheem Edwards to kind of move up and be a little more active in the attack and yeah. less focused defensively where I don't, I don't think he's great. I mean, I, I know last time we were talking to you, you were um, hailing his, 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 uh, his attributes. I don't, I'm, I'm not blown away defensively by him, but I think he's a great uh, attacking um, piece to have. And we're, con- we've converted him to left back to begin with. So it's great to allow him to kind of go back to his natural position. Um, he where was he's, also, I mean, he's really shot. He's really like shined and, you know, the, attack. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chase also entered, I, I was reading this, he entered uh, MLS's substance abuse program on March 16th of this year. Mm-hmm. So I, I wonder if that has something to do with with uh, the trade kind of getting worked out, allowing him to be a little closer to home. Yeah, they, uh, they said, you know, they he wanted a, like a fresh start kind of thing. And yeah, UCLA, I, UCLA boy. So, I mean, you know, he's, he's been here. Comfortable before. in the area. Yeah, get, and whatever, it's, you know, anybody battling demons like that, whatever helps him you know, get by and get through, uh, all the better. So I, I like it. It's going to help, you know, secure the back line a little bit more. I, I, I was never blown away with Jorge Villafania. Um, and you know, Raheem Edwards kind of came in and took that spot. It, it never, it hadn't seemed like it was Jorge's spot in a long time. And he would have struggled to kind of come back in and force his way into the team. So yeah, Good I, don't, I, I don't see him even cracking. Like, I don't see him pushing Edwards out of Well, this I team. think that's done. Yeah, I think yeah. he's, I think that's probably it. Um, and he and, wanted to retire here. So that's, you know, he got to do what he wants to do. And yeah. um, we pay to allow that to happen because that's what we do. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's good on all parties. Um, I will always remember Jorge Villafania as being signed before Greg Vanny was and had his announcement held back. So it looked like he was a Greg Vanny signing when he wasn't and now that's all done so yeah good on you kid yeah so unfortunately for for him um and then you know a little fortunate we saw a, a chase a little bit on on the weekend against uh against austin and you know hey it looked pretty yeah. good, looked very capable we got a clean sheet <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah. Okay. tough to complain like he's seems like you're ready to ready to slot right in um uh, so and, this is this is from uh, Vanny, courtesy of of Corner of the Galaxy, uh, from the update on on uh, Jorge Villafania's uh, injury. Uh, he commented on the knee injury. Villafania was placed on the season-ending injury list today, uh, which was back in what a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vanny says there's uh, more cartilage damage and that Villafania will need a more invasive surgery to repair it. Uh, so you know, best of luck to him and and hopefully he can come back. And, and you know if. You know, play play another year or, or whatever he want. Not with us. I mean, maybe not with us, but um, you know, not go out like this. Like you know, you don't ever want to play her until the, you want the. Okay, all right, fine. I don't Chris, no. Chris I'm making faces. I, I don't want a player for, for to the, go for out the this audio way. Listeners, that the, Chris is making faces. I don't. I don't want a player to go out this way. I, you know, but I am accepting. Do, <laughs> I'm accepting of when it happens. It don't have to be with us. It could be you know USL team. Yeah, Cal United. Yeah, I mean, yeah, hey, you know, who knows? They might they might be scouting him. Okay. From, yeah. from the medical hospital, from the, hey. the medical facility that he's at. Local medical facility. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's. I mean, look, I, I wish to get the best, and you're right. I don't want to see anybody go out this way. Um, but it it wasn't working prior to his injury, and it's probably not. You just look at the way we were playing with Raheem, and even the way we were playing with with Chase, and the the limited time he had against Austin, it wasn't going to suit what was left of Jorge's body. It's just, it's, it's, it's a style that would, uh, you know, you would imagine his knee would not be able to hold up to that amount of running and distance he would need to cover to be an effective member of the way we're, we're kind of strategically setting up. So as you say, wish him the best um, and hope he gets to find one more place that allows him to get back in and get some games in before he calls the time. But that's pro- I think that's probably it for us. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't think uh, 
I think this probably ends the spell with, with him and with the team. Um, moving on, let's, let's talk a little G2 real quick. We're going to go through this real fast because um, I don't know if you've been keeping up with them, Chris. Um, you know what's I've, weird? I've, I've been keeping I have an a eye lo- on what, Yeah. I have a lot of time and no. <laughs> like I work out. Tw- I try to work out twice a day. I try to work out in the morning and at night. And, uh, and then I sleep and oh, I, I work out in the morning. I go to work. I come home. I work out again. I make dinner and I go to bed. Uh, I'm just trying to battle depression back. <laughs> so the galaxy tends to not help that. Uh, so I, I, I'm keeping, I saw, I, I try to keep an eye on the results and I watch a little bit of the game if I can, but no, not, not a ton. If I'm honest. Uh, so since we've gone, the uh, G2 played, um, sorry. Phoenix rising on May the 1st uh, and actually with a three, nothing victory over a team. That's usually pretty good at beating up, beating us up um, three, nothing, three uh, goals in the first half, a second minute goal from Cabral, which was more like a, a, a pass than it was a shot on goal, but you know, Hey, take him like you can get him. Definitely um, a pass. Someone Definitely at least, at least one Cabral, one Cabral scoring goals. Um, Dunbar with the second and the 13 minute. And then Perez who was, just amazing that game uh, with two assists and a goal. Uh, he finished off that third goal in the 43rd minute of the game. Um, yeah. Johnny Perez is so is good. Really, really like shown in that game. Johnny Perez is so good. The Cleveland brothers should be screwing him out of uh, our system before you know it. Oh, like if, they, if, if they were still here, you know, cause they, they claim all these players that they've. Hey, you, you know, never know. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then on uh, May the 7th, the galaxy G2 played against El Paso and this this is this is pretty much the the G2 in uh, like a summary of them in in, in two matches. Uh, they beat Phoenix three nothing and then go on and, and lose to El Paso four nothing. So uh, you know this is <laughs> give that goal differential. This back. is just the 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 yin and yang of that is the G2. Um, yeah, so four nothing to loco, locomotive El Paso locomotive. FC, El locomotive. The locomotive uh, locomoco. Uh, yeah, so it's. <sighs> It's not been it's not been a, the greatest season. They're doing okay. Uh, they're currently sitting eighth in in the West, which is just outside the playoff line. Um, and they're sitting, I believe, like one point or tied with points with uh, El Paso locomotive. Oh, two points behind El Paso with a game in hand. Uh, they have G two are three, four, and two on the season with a negative two goal difference. So not not terrible. Uh, right there in the middle of the pack, but uh, for the last year the uh, in USL, it's it's looking like it probably not going to make a playoff again, or maybe you know early early round knockout, but it's it's still early. Uh, GC will play against Louisville City, I believe, on Friday. Uh, so check that out. You know, ESPN Plus, go watch that. Um, yeah, Louisville City currently sitting first in the East, so probably a game that's that's probably uh, GC would not going to two nothing G two. Uh, Louisville City, uh, yeah, uh, undefeated on the season so far, so probably not going to turn out well for, for G2 on Friday. But, you know, check them out still. You can watch, uh, you know, the young kids who are, are very talented, and hopefully we can get some sort of result. But, Squeak something out. Yeah, happen, but, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Two nothing G2, I'd call it. You're calling it? Well, I'm, I'm bad at predictions this year, so I'm not, I'm not saying nothing. Hey, I, I'm better. I'm watching over my shoulder right now. Uh, for Pippi, man, Pippi is killing it, killing the game. <laughs> Two games in, just killing it, smoking uh, it, sm- smoking the ad pack for sure. Uh, that's 100. <laughs> uh, percent So let's move on. The uh, well, let's talk briefly about RSL one Gal- LA Galaxy uh, nothing. Uh, this game was back on April 30th. Uh, uh, Marcos Lopez goal. Uh, not great from the team. Just it's another one of those games where. A lot of missed opportunities, and uh, you know our our DP is not firing on you know on all the all the cylinders or whatever you want to whatever the phrase is. But uh, not a great game from from the Galaxy. But RSL is kind of like our our that team that we find we find a struggle even if they're not in their best form. It's always weird to me when those things happen because it's it's like everyone who was at RSL when they became a boogie team is gone. Everyone who was on the galaxy when they were our boogie team is gone. Like the philosophies of both clubs are pretty different. The, the I mean, playing style of both clubs are pretty different. If, if you can have two opposite spectrums, 
it's a galaxy on one end and the RSL on the other end. Yeah, but it is, you know, where it's, it's like just the galaxy's never... like, let's let's buy these stars, and then RSL's like, the team is the star, whatever they're saying it is. I think I fell asleep during that game. What time did that game come on? Do you remember? Early. Was that, that was an early game? game? Yeah, well, oh, no, I saw us. that. I was probably probably drunk. Probably probably had a couple beers. Uh, well, if it's early for you, it's 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 probably, for probably like a four o'clock game for Mid me. Afternoon whatever. for you, yeah. Perfect time, it's, man. I tell you, man, the the one beautiful thing about being here. The, who did Liverpool play? Tottenham. Liverpool played Tottenham this weekend. Mm-hmm. That game was on at like four o'clock in the afternoon. Like I watch soccer all damn day here. It's easy. Uh, it's 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 one of the benefits of this. Uh, this very dry place. Yeah, I got I got to watch Watford um, solidify the relegation under the yeah. weekend. So that was fun. But it's great because now you're officially a Newcastle. Newcastle is your Premier League team. Let's go away, boys. All right, it's halfway there. Something. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. Hey, got, look, got time. it's early. It's early. Yeah, you got time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you got time. <laughs> away, may, lads, or whatever. May, there you go. I may have a, a jersey, a Newcastle jersey you can fit that I can just give you because Erica's go. certainly tired of dealing with all my fucking jerseys. <laughs> I saw pictures you posted of your Complain duffel bag of. and like two boxes extra of jerseys. The two boxes aren't necessary. The jerseys will fit in the duffel bag. They all came out of the duffel bag. They'll fit back in the duffel bag. It's a separate argument. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's all it's made. To, it's it's all done to make me look bad. Mm, you know, I think you, you, you did plenty of a good job on that, sir. Not necessary. Personal attacks is what they call those. <laughs> it's a quick little, it's a quick little, quick, quick little, quick little jig to you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, one nothing to to RSL. Uh, we move on to to the one nothing win again. These these one nothing way games. more important. Yeah, uh, one nothing win against Austin over the weekend. Uh, goal Golasso. I call it a Golasso. It was a great goal from uh, Mark Delgado, uh, who also was named to Team of the Week. Well, congratulations to you, sir. Again, I put Chad Gaspard on here. Uh, Ch- Chase Gasper. Let me go change that on my thing. Uh, Chase Gasper with his debut uh, in this game. Um, I again thought he did a pretty terrific job. How old is he, by the way? Do you know how old he is? I don't. Not off the top of my head. I can look it up really quick. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up real quick because my my man definitely has that early balding. Right, twenty six. Damn, why you just you shooting like that? He's got that. He's got that Landon Donovan hairline going with him. But you know, a if you if you can be the the Lenny Don of our defense, I, I I don't mind. Wow, this is is these personal attacks coming out for a brand new player. I'm I'm feisty today, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah no, I, I I you know it wasn't. It's weird where our, our struggle to to finish these chances is is at some point going to come back to hurt us. Ooh. Yeah, because my goodness, especially. Well, let's let's talk about that 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 missed chance that Chicha had. Oh, no, no one wants to say it. It's not even that he missed a chance. Kevin Cabral should have an assist. Like for for everyone who who gets on on Kevin and Kevin's useless and look at the stats and blah blah blah. He should that have was, an assist. That was that one right there. That's what that's what you pay Javier for. Like that's that could little, that could have been the start of the Cabral season right there. No, that that could have been it. That could have been takes, it. Just takes one. You just got to you got to break that. You got to break that duct, and before you know it, he's just he's just serving dimes left, right, and center. And he took he made that pass on the bounce, like he took it he took it in the run of play off the bounce and and cross it in perfectly right to where you you know the person you would want on the end of that. Mm-hmm. Um, it should go in. Chicharito knew that it should have gone in, and you you could see in his frustration with himself that it should have gone in. It would have been great if Kevin just like looked at him and like raised his hands to the air and just like shook his head and turned and walked away. We could dare not do like, that. Be like shut your no- you could shut your mouth now, sir. There was a there was a moment where uh, Efrain tries to get, play a pass to uh, to to Chicharito, and it's it's way light, like way like two three feet in front of him, way light, and just gets cut off by a defender. And neither of them move to close down the guy who just took the ball. <laughs> Efrain just looks at Javi, he looks at Chicha, and it's just like. What happened? And Javier is like, what the "Fuck, you looking at me for? Like, you passed me the ball. What do you mean? What happened?" It's, uh, yeah, you know, look, it, it's, it's, we're not, we're not, um, we're not good, but we're we're winning these dirty games. We're winning these ugly games, and we're most important. The most important thing is we're we're keeping the ball out of our net in general. Yeah. If defensively, 
you can, this was an old Bruce arena trope defensively. If you can, if you can keep a clean sheet, you give yourself a chance to win the game. If, if you can, if you can keep it nil, nil, you can keep it, you know, one, one, you give yourself a chance to kind of steal one late. And, and those points all count the same. It, it would, yeah, it would be great if, if, if Javier put that, that chance away or if, uh, oh, it's, yeah, of course, you know, winning for nothing, three, nothing. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Who had that? Who four had noth- that chance? Four, nothing is the same amount of points as one, nothing. Who had that unless unless you it's late in the season and you start looking at your goal differential? That is true. But these are the games that that lay that goal differential foundation later in the year when you have two and three chances that you're not putting away, and, and then you look you look at the end of the year and you're in seventh and you're going into a last game and you're like, oh, well, we need a win by X amount of goals, and then we're definitely in, or we need to draw by you know, it, it's 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 these are those matches that you kind of want to start padding those things out. Um, yeah. And I would, had a, I would, I would have to see too, because what is this like a third or fourth away win this year? Third, maybe. Uh, how many, how many away games have we won? I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm going to go through the schedule right now. Uh, away took uh, the clit. That was, that was a <sighs> victory uh, away to Portland. And then. Now this one away to Austin. So that's three, so three. away wins. Like even in the best uh, Bruce Arena days. What was like, the score of the Portland one? Uh, three one. Three one. Because I know we were one nothing against uh, uh, the Clit. We were one nothing against yeah. uh, Charlotte, yeah. and we were one nothing here against Austin. Like yeah, it's these it's these tight dirty ones. But I, I would like someone to go back and see like even in, in the Bruce Arena days, like three away wins is probably the best we've we had under under his reign. It was a lot of draws. But, I a lot mean, of draws away, yeah. But yeah. Bruce was always like, "You get a draw away, and that's a good result." Um, and Bruce was all like, "Let's just take care of business at home." Like, we we were. I, I, if I'm and uh, you know, people are going to correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I remember being terrible away with Bruce Arena. Well, that's the only place we could have been terrible away. We we didn't lose at home for like a year and a half. Yeah, it's if if you were not going, if you're not going to win the supporter shield every single year with Bruce Arena, it's because you're not winning on the road. Um. But someone had a chance really late. I want to say it was Mark Delgado, but I don't think it was. Grant Sear had a couple chances that went straight to Grant, the goalkeeper. Grant Sear should have put one away for sure. Uh, Revolution had a, a shot that went keeper side that he 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 just he dragged it a little bit to the side, um, and I think Tarbell may have had it anyway. But he 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 was trying to pick out that little corner. We're we're getting was it was it uh, Jovalich who had that like from halfway? He just. You just try just a little bit up. It just uh, hit the top of the roof of the net. It's like, oh, that would have been that would have been beautiful. But they're getting they're getting in these these spaces and they're getting these chances. We're just we're just not clinical enough and putting them away. And it could come back to hurt you. The most important thing is you you got three points on the road. I think we were the first team to beat them at home. I'm pretty sure they were undefeated at home. Um, I think this this isn't in like for whatever the stat was that this is the first away win for a team in texas or something like that for in all of texas yeah in yeah. all of texas yeah oh who's not from texas they've yeah, beaten each like other that, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah they beat yeah. each other but for a team that's not in texas that's the first away win um yeah and it's great result great result necessary keeps us keeps us near the top of the pack it keeps us in the hunt um fifth clean sheet i mean another clean sheet yeah the, the, the defense looked pretty shaky in this game for some reason like getting away with except, that except for my boy Big, 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 uh, big Genesis, big Genesis out here. Got me wanting to throw my Nintendo out the window, man. What, what a turnaround that man has had. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I I don't know how you could, you could nominate anyone unless Cabral goes on a tear and scores like 10 goals and lays out 20 dimes, you know, comeback player of the year has to be Sega cool Like he's been, he's been just phenomenal. Even still like Williams was really shaky. He kept, he kept having these weird kind of clearances, where the ball would bounce in near the middle, um, near the middle of the box. And he would, he, he wouldn't step to it. He would just like stand pat and try to raise his boot really high as Laton did it a lot, but he was super flexible and could get away with it, but he would just stand kind of plant one of his feet and then kick out with the other one as high as he could. But every time he hit it, he knocked it towards the center of the box, which is not where you would want a center back to clear ball, especially if he's not, getting all of the ball when he does it instead of just knocking it, uh, forcing someone else to make a call. 
there was also that shot that kind of bounced off uh, Diego Fagundes's stomach and started bouncing towards Jonathan Bond, and he 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 uh, he scooped it up before anyone else could get to it. We easily could have drew or lost this game. Yeah, but they're finding ways to get to the end. And I think that's what that's one of my points too, saying that um, as much as you know the the five clean sheets, I think it's a little. Um, it's a little like it covers up the the what the defense has been like. Yes, I think one thing that I've I've appreciated about this defense is that they're gritty. Like they they will get into it. Like we haven't really seen that much in, in our defense in the last five years, six years. I just noticed the calendar behind you. Oh, did you like, see it? Did looks you see like it? Matt's dad. Yeah, yeah. it's dope. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's uh our some of Matt's uh, calendar that we got this year. It's pretty dope, man. Um. Audio yeah, so it's it's just covering up the the what our defense is, and I'm not saying it's been bad, but it's just any other team that's a good team would have capitalized on on our on our mistakes. Like Bond, Bond was a little shaky on on the weekend. Uh, like you said, like um, Derek Williams a little shaky. Uh, so it's I think our team has the results have been a little bit favorable to what our team still is, which is. Um, probably your fifth, sixth place in the West. Uh, but luckily, like the other West teams haven't been really stepping up. And you have a Seattle who's, you know, even though they beat us, has that's uh, the major thing on, you got to factor. Like, it's focused on something else. At some point, Seattle's going to wake the fuck up. Yeah. And, and this shit's, you know, this, this easy ride's kind of this, this third in the West is kind of going to have to start sliding back a little bit. Um, where I would disagree with you is only, you know, fifth or sixth, I'm not really sure, but where I would disagree with you is defensively, we seem pretty sound. We have two top-notch defensive midfielders that play every game, that play together and and play in tandem and seem to work out together. Um, The center back that they sit in front of in Koulibaly has had a a great season, a resurgent season. You expect game-to-game Williams is eventually going to pick it up. Um, now you have a starting or regular starting left back who is just going to play left back, who isn't a, a left winger that's being converted to play left back, who is, you know, doing a better job than everyone expected him to do. And Julian's kind of had his slow start to the season. So now you have a set left back who's, who's more than likely going to play every single game at left back. You have a center back, Kula Blee, who's who's been great. You have Williams, who you hope to you know pick it up again. Defensively, we're, we're pretty damn good defensively that's the one thing that we we have yeah we still have our shaky moments yeah bond can have his shaky moments every now and again but in general this is where we're going to to find the majority of our success and it seems like you know that would point to what greg first said i think last season when the defense is done when i'm finally done with what i'm trying to build here defensively we're going to be one of the better defensive units in the league. I, I would wonder, and I'm not advocating benching the kid or anything, but I would wonder what would happen if you played Kel, uh, Kelvin Leardham at right back as someone who's going to stay at home playing right back a little bit more than Julian is natively going to try to do in, in pushing forward and getting to, into the attack. So if you could have Chase Gasper, Koulibaly, Williams, and, and Leardham just sitting back, just playing defense with, with Marky Del, Mark, sorry, Mark Delgado and, and Ryan Revolution just sitting in front of them, holding it down. We were at five clean sheets for the season, and the defense is just finishing getting solidified. I, I, I don't know that you could have asked for anything more than what we've had so far. Damn, dude, what ghetto ass neighborhood you got where you your dogs and shit? What if I what have I been explaining to you? I mean, the <laughs> fact the fact that she's alive is is a testament to my patience. I I, 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 I that dog's gonna end up eating that woman when she like hasn't been seen so, in ten days. I hope so. Yeah, in a, in a, in a perfect scenario, her pig heart would give out in the middle of a shower or something, and her dog would would nibble on her uh, before anybody can find her. And I don't know that anyone would ever come. So it, it wouldn't matter. I certainly wouldn't go looking for her. Oh, man. I would, yeah. I would, I would let, no, I'm not done. I would, <laughs> let her, done. I, would, <laughs> I would let her body return to the earth and, and, and have all the, I would have a sea creature come out from one of the thousand lakes here and swallow her back to, to the depths of Hades. Now I'm done. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that the defense They're is mean terrible. To that dog, dude, man, they keep that dog in a crate all fucking day. These people are awful. Yeah, dog deserves better. Uh, you know, I just assume there's no laws in North Carolina. Uh, I mean, Ben should have really made his clean sheet bet this year. Yeah, he fucked up. Yeah, he, he fucked up. that one up. He yeah, up. he fucked that one up a little bit. That's um, okay. Let's talk about let's talk about the DPS, man. I mean, it's 
four games now where none of our DPs have scored a goal or made an assist. Uh, seems like Chicha's on on like after his hot streak, like went real cold real quick. Mm-hmm. Well, he's a, he's a poacher. Like, yeah. his, what he does is going to be extremely dependent on what other people do. And we were, you know, how many games into the the Costa signing, and that's just been well. That was always going to be trash. Oof. And then, no, I mean, you know, what more can we say about Cabral? Like, that's just you know beating a dead horse at this point. You know, the the best part, if you want to talk about the designated players, the best part is, um, who was it? Who's the guy everyone makes fun of? Paul Tenorio. Yeah. He did a Twitter. Did our you friend, see that? He, our, he friend did Paul, a, our friend Paul Tenario. Reporter confirming reports. Mm-hmm. He did a, a Twitter space today uh, with, with I think the guy's name was David Glass or something like that. David Gass. I don't remember. Um, but he did. Oh, like Gass. A, I think he's like an MLS guy. Yeah. He did a 30 minute uh, Twitter spaces today. In the first 15 minutes or so, he's talking about the galaxy and a conversation he had with Greg Manny, where he sat down with him and they got to kind of discuss what was going on from Greg's perspective with the, the, the build out oh, yeah. of the team. I did, I did not that. make the galaxy look good. It, it of course it didn't, but how could anything? Um, and the main takeaway that I had from the whole thing, you hear that train, the main takeaway that I had was uh, he says what Greg felt was the big issue was that there wasn't an infrastructure uh, to carry on. Basically, you know, I've compared us to Manchester United a lot, and it's basically the same situation. There's not a overall infrastructure. There's not an overall game plan of what you're trying to do. There's not an overall philosophy as a club on what you're trying to do. You have a coach gets put in. He is supported. He is he is certainly financially backed, and they throw money at a problem, and we try to figure it out as best we can. And we try to make each thing work, but when that thing doesn't work, we clean house completely because there's not an overarching philosophy. So we don't even have a general manager at this point who's 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 supposed to plan the bigger picture, the bigger space of everything that's supposed to happen. So you get you get um, you know Bruce left. Bruce was the last person that probably had a big overarching philosophy on how he wanted to run things. This is going to come back to the DPs, I promise. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, TK also had that plan, but. Yeah, I well, was snuffed know, out pretty quickly. There you go. Uh, Bruce had his philosophy on how he wanted to run things, and he got out. When he got out, we brought you know, in the, the guy that's running uh, the team that's in the Europa League final, but whatever. Uh, who's in the Europa League final? Feyenoord and some other team. Are they really? Oh, good for them. Uh, I know. I know. All I know is Jose's in the Europa Conference League final. I, I care about that way. Oh, more. that one. Whatever one. Yeah. There's like uh, whatever competitions going on. Well, there's three now. Yeah, there's three. Um, which is going to get Newcastle in Europe even faster. <laughs> uh, but they, Bruce left, and then they brought in Anolfo. And with Anolfo, they wanted to graduate all of the. the... Also, yeah, sorry, they'll be playing uh, Roma. Are they playing Roma? Oh, yeah. they're going to get crushed. Fuck you, DTK. Up Jose Mourinho. Um, uh, Anolfo came in, they, they graduated all the young kids. And then when that didn't work, they fired him halfway through the season. They brought in Ziggy. Ziggy's mandate was not to graduate all the kids from, from the academy, even though you had just moved up all these kids. So you just fucked all those kids' careers because they got they got graduated way before they were ready to get graduated. Ziggy comes in, he starts to lay a groundwork, he gets Ola Kamara, he starts building out a team, and then the powers that be bring in Zlatan. And you gotta find a way to make Zlatan work. You just need to go make it work. We brought you a superstar, go make it work. So Ziggy makes Laton work and he beats LAFC in that first game. Beautiful. Just a beautiful, beautiful day. But Ziggy ends up getting Ziggy ends up getting let go or terminated or cut or whatever phrase they use because his his health was failing. Um and and you know, you bring in a replacement and the replacement doesn't work and you clean house with the replacement. And then like it's it's a it's a philosophy of not having a a philosophy. We bring somebody in, we back them and support them, and then we clean house when it doesn't work. So as it is now, Greg is supposed to be laying that groundwork and laying this philosophy of even when I go, because every manager leaves at some point, doesn't matter how successful you are, everyone leaves. Even when I go, we should still have an overarching structure of what we want to do. With that said, at least if you listen to Tenorio, Klein is still controlling the designated player signings that's still his mandate so we're still you know marketing way way last we're still going to get chicharito if he's available we're still going to make the call on kevin cabral 
we're still going to make the call on Diego Costa. Four games in a row, your DP is not working out. The team still being overall successful in spite of them not working out. It, it, it's hard to complain too much, but you know, you, 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 it makes sense that you went and got a Douglas Costa who could play wherever he wanted to play, except mm, for where he wherever. was currently playing. He could play Tucker. He could have played any team he wanted to. Yeah. But he chose just here. Not, he chose just, here. Just not in the top flight of Brazil. Uh, just no longer in the second division of Brazil. And he couldn't go back to the team who owned him. Besides those things. Besides those ones, you know. But, you know, Greg's job is to make those those signings work. And regardless of whether those signings fit into what we're trying to do or what we want to do, or they make sense in any way, his job is to make all those things work. And that's the way it's going to be until Klein is gone. And that's, you know, we have to find a way to win in spite of what he thinks is a good idea. And that's been the case for a long time. Yeah. And I I think someone brought up a point saying like, maybe that's why uh, Vanny hasn't benched Cabral at this point in the season. You can't. Yeah, yeah, you can't. It's it's look, it's a tale as old as time, man. You you have to make those guys work. We couldn't get we couldn't get another forward. We got Yoni Gonzalez, who was a right winger. We had to play him at forward because you got to make him work. Uh we, you you gotta play Geo when he doesn't want to play because you gotta make it work. When Jared's body was breaking down, you gotta make it work. Like we make signings and the coaches who are there, it's their job to make those things work. It's but that's why it, they're equatable to Manchester United. Manchester United is not a team. It's a collection of individual superstars. They're a, they're a marketing brand. Jaden Sancho doesn't seem to fit that team very well. I mean, as I, I'm, I'm no Manchester United scholar, so I had no idea. I do know that Donny van de Beek plays a, as an advanced midfielder and Bruno Fernandes, who you just signed to a five-year extension, plays as an, as an advanced midfielder. So what is the, what's your plan? Like, what is your plan past well, he was available and he was really good. So we had to go get him like that. Doesn't that's, that's not all that's rarely. Is that the right idea? Like rarely is it just, Hey, we're good. Look at what city did city played for. A, they want, they wanted Harry Kane. They, they offered eight, what is it? 80 million for Harry Kane. They couldn't get him. They played with nothing but midfielders at center forward for a year. And then when it came time to go buy a center forward, they were like, cool, we'll take the best young player, young center forward in the world because we've already carved out the spot for a center forward. So we couldn't get Harry. Now Harry's, you know, he, he's, he's, I think he's eight or nine years older than Halong. So we'll wait. And then when we wait, now we have a year to figure out who we want. We have a year to court who we want. And we have, we have a year to, to make sure when we finally pull the trigger that it's going to work. Yeah. I'm shocked he didn't do that. I'm shocked he didn't go to uh, Madrid, which was kind of everyone reporting that he's, he's like 21, 22 years old. He's he could play. Time. He could play at City for five years and then go when he's twenty six. It's not. He's got nothing but time. Yeah. It's a, it's it's a very hit. That's the, ridiculous. But That's if ridiculous, you watched man. if you watched Halan, this isn't going to be EPL talk. But if you watched him when he was at at a Red Bull Salzburg, and all the big teams were um, all the big teams were were kind of jockeying for trying to sign him. Dortmund made the, the smartest decision. You come here. We'll develop you and we'll give you a release clause that lets you, it'll activate in two years. So we'll get two years out of you. And if you want to go before those two years, then we get to sell you at market value. Say you score a hundred goals and Real Madrid wants to come in for 150 million. Cool. We'll let you go for 150 million. But if you don't, if you just have an outstanding season, two years, your, your uh, release clause kicks in and you can go for what everyone thought was 75 million turned out to be 60 million. um, And you're good. See, he goes to City. He's gonna make. I think he's making three hundred fifty thousand pounds a week. Twenty one, twenty two years like old. Like four hundred something. Might uh, might be euros. Might be a conversion. I don't know. Yeah. But I, I I heard he was he was like three fifty, three seventy five, something like that. Uh, and he'll play he'll play at City for five or six years, and he'll go to Madrid after, and and, and link up with Mbappe, or probably Mbappe will be coming a little closer to the end of his time. But he'll be at the at the height of his abilities in five years. It's genius, but this is what happens when you when you plan for it. When you make a move to to plan, like Mbappe is going to come in to essentially replace Karim Benzema, who who might have one or two years left at Madrid. Probably, probably, yeah, maybe two. Talk, talk but, about a uh, renaissance, man. That, he's he's made a complete turnaround. Where he was going to go from like being on the outs of Madrid and now being one of the Benzema, best. Players. Oh my god, he's 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 the best. 
best pure center forward in the world right now. He's fantastic to watch. Um, so back to the galaxy. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm, our, our center forwards. Let's talk about another world class player in uh, in future. Kevin Andrew. Cabral. Kevin Cabral. Um, so let's let's move on a little bit. What's what would who would be your man of the match for the, the Austin game? Uh, ooh, um, gosh, I I keep saying this, and at some point I have to. I like I like Delgado obviously getting the goal and and everything he brings to center midfield, but I, I'm going to say this every chance that I get I got to pick Hula Bali because I don't know how many chances I'm going to get to do it. Uh, it's fair. It's it's it's, it's fair. I think he it's continues fair. to he continues to, to the turnaround that he has made is is so impressive and and with us keeping clean sheet after clean sheet I got I kind of got to pick him. All right. What about uh, you? Me? Uh, yeah, I was I was going to just stick with. Delgado, you know, just because it's a guy who's really solidified that that center midfield and uh, to get like the first goal from the outside of the box since like 2020's Pavon, like it's it's no uh, uh, Efrain's against uh, oh that's right yeah. was outside that's the right, box, right. Uh, but I mean impressive from from a guy and getting his first goal and and having to be from outside the box and having it the winner like that's pretty impressive. I, I, I Great goal too. Yeah, it, the best the best part of his goal is it all starts with Douglas Costa trying to do all these stepovers as and and the defender literally not moving because he knew he was going to screw it up. Yeah, you mean the defender literally just stood there and he just waited. He just, just waited. waited. He, just, he just, waited. just waited. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> they're was, all they're terrible signings. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Big Tony's email. Thank you again, Big Tony, for for doing this stuff. Uh, prognostication. <laughs> well, we have two weekends to update on, so let's dive right into it. Two weeks ago. The G's traveled to Utah to face. <laughs> I thought you were laughing at me. I was, uh, to face fake Salt Lake. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Chris predicted a win, while both Ed and Ben predicted a draw. Actually, Ben didn't get in the prediction, so he was assigned the standard nil nil. Anyways, uh, I think that we know what happened. Salt Lake beat the G's one nothing. So no points for the boys. But who did get it? Who did uh, score a point? That's right, my dog Pippi, who predicted a three two loss. Uh, so with, with that amazing prediction, she jumps ahead of Ed in the standings with one point, while Ed still wallows at the bottom with a big old goose egg. Um, then came our first trip to Texas in the year to face Austin, Austin FC. Heading into the game, Austin was sitting four points above the G's in second place uh, in the West, so it looked like it would likely be a difficult game for us. Uh, knowing this, Chris and Ben predicted a loss, while Ed thought we might be able to manage a draw uh, from the game. Pippi had full confidence in the team and predicted a one nothing win, <laughs> expecting, go. like many, that Chicha would slot the home winner, uh, the winner home. Well, just like the dog foretold, the, G- the G's escaped Austin with the one nothing win, uh, but it was Delgado who was the hero on the day. Uh, but with that win, it was enough to get Pippi another three points, while the boys each got their second week of nothing. So Chris still leads the pack with six points on the season, uh, but Pippi, the predicting dog, now sits in second with four points. Uh, ben only has one point in third, and Ed still is yet to score a single point. So after not playing for the first quarter of the season, Pippi sits comfortably in second place. It's given awesome. how <laughs> given how well the boys have done so far, it seems like she might be able to win it all. Uh, and I'm by the way, I am rooting for her. I am definitely rooting for her. Uh, it's a bit shameful to think Ed hasn't gotten any points yet. Terrible Ed. Just you might go the whole season. I at this point, I want to go the whole season without getting a point. I think yeah, that would be. That'd sure. be the more amazing part of it. That's like that's like the nerd who goes to prom by himself and is like, I didn't want to take a girl. I didn't want to take a date. Of course you didn't. I wanted to go by myself. Then yeah. I could leave whenever I wanted. Look at all these ladies here, right for the picking. It's like I, I want a good Christian girl. Yeah. Not uh, any of these loose women. None of these loose, loosely goosies over here. <laughs> uh listener predictions. So the RSL game was pretty ugly. We had 45 participants and only one listener. By the way, what a great name. Playboy bartender. Uh, for oh, yeah. the loss coming. Uh, he expected a few more goals to be scored against the G's. 2 nothing. But he at least got the number of goals the G scored. Correct. So two points for him. Uh, it was the first time joining us for the year. So he has a bit of work before he challenges the leaders. Uh, lots of game to go. So he could still win it all. Then came the G's win at Austin. This time, 50 people put in predictions. And 22 of them predicted a G's win, but only one person, forces from above, uh, correctly predicted. Uh, these names are so great. Uh, these <laughs> correctly pre- predicted the final score. However, like many of us, he expected Chicha to score the winner. Uh, not a single person expected Marky Mark Delgado uh, to score a goal. 
So only three points for forces and one point for the other 21 people who predicted a win. Uh, so in the standings, we are seeing a few changes. Chris G was uh, the lone leader uh, three weeks ago, but didn't score any points in the last two games, which allowed Victor L to move into a tie for the first with Chris. As both now have 13 points. Uh, our good friend David Klein is sitting in second uh, with 12 points. Uh, and this is him on, on that new uh, that new dad brain. So you guys are, are real falling behind on that. Uh, Jason L is in third with 11 and Luis L is fourth with 10 points. Uh, three others sit in fifth with nine points. So very tight at the top. A single good week from anyone could change the standings. Lots of games to predict still. Whew, looking forward. Uh, on Saturday, the G's welcome FC Dallas. Well, you know what? I'm going to keep that because um, – oh, sorry. I'll just keep reading. On Saturday, the G's welcome FC Dallas to the digs. But before that, on Wednesday, the G's travel to the Great Park of Irvine to face California United Strikers uh, FC in the Open Cup match. We should see some of the B-team squad get some time, and if they can score some goals, it's probably unlikely we will see all of our top players. If that happens, it will allow the G's stars to take a much-needed rest and be fresh for the game on Saturday. Let's all hope we put up a lot of goals on Wednesday. Uh, I'll actually be at the game, so I hope to see everyone there. Big Tony, but you're not there. Uh, so we'll stick with that for now. There's still a little bit more on the, the Big Tony email, but let's talk. Let's say, let's say, let's say Big Tony's going to be there on behalf of the squad cast since neither of us will be there. I will be there. Are you going to be there? Oh, I apologize. Yeah, I, I was. I, I uh, someone, someone hit me up and they, they were like, I have a ticket. I will be there. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, well, you can still be there on behalf of the squad cast, Tony. You can be my uh, my avatar. I'll be like Chris. Like, don't talk to me. Don't 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 hit me up. I don't know what that is. Uh, but yeah, don't so talk to me. Yeah, don't talk to me. Leave me alone. Leave him alone. Uh, the Galaxy go to Orange County and face Cal United FC in the round of thirty-two in the U.S. Open Cup. Uh, it'll be tomorrow, Wednesday, May the eleventh at seven thirty p.m. on ESPN Plus. Uh, Cal United have beaten San Fernando Valley 5-0 in the second round. And then FC Tucson 2-1 in the third round to face us in this round. Uh, it's going to be very exciting. Buses heading down to Orange County. I know a lot of people who probably are living in the area or around there probably just drive there. Uh, but it should be interesting, man. It should be fun. First away Open Cup match I've been to in ever, maybe? Man. No, we went to a, we went to a, a, a Open Cup match against the Blues. Oh yeah, taking, okay. But the, how long ago was that? That was a long time. Mike Randolph yeah, exactly. was, was a long time ago. Was, was that the one where um was Tudela on that team at that point? Where Boo and Josh Tudela, yeah. Okay, yeah. Weird Eddie Munster looking dude. Uh yeah, so it'll be fun. It'll be interesting uh to head on like an away trip on a bus that's gonna be like 15 miles from, from the stadium. Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at the at the results right now. DC United's out, Philadelphia's out. Yeah, they're, they're, so some of the games are happening today. I, I know that. Yeah, Detroit Detroit City is playing Louisville City right now. Inter Miami is playing South Georgia Tormenta. Uh, Sporting Kansas City is playing FC Dallas, and uh, LAFC are playing Portland. That's the last game. It starts at ten thirty. Interesting. That's that's so you have both teams who are playing the G two and and first team playing. Mm-hmm. So that'd be interesting. And Dallas has to play. Might have to play a little bit of their starters against. You said Kansas City. They're playing sport in Kansas City. Yeah, they're playing right now. I can actually tell you which of their starters are playing. Oh, maybe, yeah. If any. Are we doing predictions for the Open Cup game? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's not a regular okay. season game, right? Um, but it should be fun. It should be interesting. I'll be there if you want to come. If you're going to be there, come in. I'll say hi. Um, I'll be there probably with, like, Big Tony and people that are talking about Pippi and how awesome of a predictor she is. Great dog. What a great dog. What a, what a fantastic dog. Official mascot of the, the squad cast. Is that, I yeah, hope that's I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> well, I got to get Big Tony's oh, permission. Tony? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tony don't care. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, back to Big Tony's email. Uh, currently, Dallas sitting uh, sits tied on points with the Gs, having won five games, lost one, and drawn four. The Gs have won six, lost three, and drew one. Um, the concerning part is that, the Dallas, that Dallas has a plus nine goal differential, whereas the Gs only sport a plus four. Additionally, Dallas has been on a bit of a hot streak, having won three and drawn two in the last five MLS matches. Their only loss came at the hands of New England back on March 5th. Dallas plays a U.S. Open Cup match against Sporting Kansas City, as we just spent right now. Uh, so hopefully they will be tired on Saturday. Uh, regardless, this will be a tough match this weekend. Pippi has made her prediction. What is yours? We'll get into the predictions a little later. Um, 
I was like, I want to hear, I want to hear Pippi's first, so we stayed a chance. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, so cheese versus Dallas, Saturday, May fourteenth, my birthday, by the way. <laughs> hey. Uh, so if anyone wants to sponsor me for a ticket, that'd be hey, what's up? Get him uh, drunk. No, please don't. Uh, it Get is not drunk. It will be nineties night, and they're gonna bust out Twizzle. Yeah. How amazing is that? I'm more what? excited about that than about the game or anything else. Well, last I heard, that that outfit was in pretty bad, uh, pretty bad nick. So yeah, from it, from a source of ours. So it's it's great to hear that. I assume they got it repaired, or at least mm-hmm. were able to get it cleaned up and taken care of in a, in a cool way. So yeah, it's awesome. There's gonna, it's great. There's going to be a lot of kids who have no idea who Twizzle is, um, and then there's going to be a bunch of old men <laughs> who are really really happy. Fan, that fan boy there. over Twizzle, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, guys like us like oh it's twizzle bro what's up twizzle Twizzies. Yeah, you gotta love that they gotta have like a spider-man you know like no way home where it's the green cosmo the blue cosmo and then twizzle like all, all pointing like, at each other yeah all in like the same night and just have them all together uh i miss the i miss the, the green I, it's weird i hated all those cosmos when they first changed them and then you know like I got a girlfriend and I stopped caring about shit like that. <laughs> I had priorities and then, you know, stuff changed. Yeah. Then, you know, women got involved and ruined yeah. everything. So last year, the, uh, the G's and Dallas split the series one, one, and one. Uh, and like you said, G's are third, Dallas fourth, both on 19 points. Uh, the G's have the advantage on more wins. So that's why they are above Dallas on the table. Uh, Dallas are coming off a two, nothing win against Seattle but I assume that's a kind of like a CCL hangover for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, they only have one loss of the season against New England back on March 5th of this year. Uh, how will the G's come on play, Chris? Do you, is it a little more of uh, what you said? Like maybe uh, Chase gets a, gets a start, push up uh, push up uh, Edwards, or what do you think is going to be our I would, I would I would hope so. Um, I really, really, really don't want to see Costa anymore. It's weird, man. I'm like, I don't want to see – the majority of our big name players ever play again. It's, it's well, because someone's got to sit, right? So it's it's if you put it put Chase in there, you're probably sitting Efrain, right? Uh, well, if you if you play Chase, you would to play what Costa in the middle. Yeah, you probably that's a, probably your play, right? If you if you're trying to get more defensive and have Edwards push up a little bit more, so one of those players has got to go in the, in the top five, and it's, it's going to be Efrain. Yeah, you're not I mean, you're not sitting Costa, you're not sitting Cabral. You're not gonna, you know. It's hard, man. It's it's hard. Delgado and, we, and Ryan are, are stuck and are gonna be. That's your that's your midfielder right there. They usually try to make a prediction based on who should play, like who who just should play. But there there's so many of them that are so bad. The the, the factors of them like. Well, you can't, also being the DPS, you can't sit them. You can't ignore. You can't ignore. You know you can't ignore the points that are there. Like Efrain was subbed out, I think in the 57th minute of the last game, you probably factor in that he's going to be playing the open cup game. Yeah. So if, if you're subbing him early against Austin and he's going to go full 90 against Cal United, or at least until we we're, we're, we're the, the win is secured and then you, you could sub him out, then maybe he features, but I don't know. It seems like a stretch that he starts three games in a week for a kid where fitness has never really been a strong suit of his. But you would play him against Cal. You would play him in the open cup. He should maybe, be playing. Maybe in the you open don't. Cup. Maybe, maybe you are playing uh, a Perez. You're playing, you're playing uh, some more of these like G one you and play, a half you, players. We play Perez on the right wing. If you're going to play Perez, you play him on the right wing. And it's finally your opportunity to play Efrain through the middle. Cause you have is um, Aguita still working back for fitness. So you're probably not no, gonna Daniel Giddy played. He played. Oh, uh, he 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 wrapped up of? the end of oh, the no. Austin game. No, who am I thinking of? Um, oh my goodness! Yeah, so you probably play. You maybe might play Giddy up there. You're gonna play some of these one and a half guys, like these G one and a half guys. You, you probably see uh, maybe like a, a Jalen Neal playing center back. You'll have probably have uh, Gaspar playing just to get like a little more match fitness. You probably have him play. Um, who else? You probably have uh, Preston Judd playing as your as your forward. Mm-mm. You got, you got it. You you got to start, got to start Deja on you over like, you can't, oh, you, that is, you, you can't that is find minutes yeah. for that guy. You can't, you cannot seem to find anything more than junk if, minutes. If for he him. does not start, that's just like a clear sign that, that Greg is just not about him. Right. He should be, he, he, he already has, um, 
he already has a justifiable case to be furious with the lack of minutes that he's getting while Costa and Cabral are starting matches. He already has a justifiable reason for being furious. If, if we're playing a, a what is it, a NISL team and he still can't get minutes in, in a cup match and he still can't get any minutes and you're, you're still going to start Chicharito on, on, on the weekend. Like, come on. Uh, I assume well, you're definitely, not, you're definitely not, you're definitely uh, resting Javier Hernandez. Like he's not, he's not, he's not even travel. He's not, he's not traveling. He's not going to travel the 30 minutes down to orange County. I imagine he'll travel. I imagine he'll, he'll be there. He should be there. Uh, it would be, it would be bad form as a captain to not be there, but uh, bro, he's got call of duty to play, man. I wouldn't be no look at like, I wouldn't be pissed if he didn't go. I wouldn't care. Either. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, why would he even, why bother? Why because bother? he's, he's, the, he's the leader. Like, yeah, he's, he's the leader. You're, you're, you're down the road. I mean, it, it, if this is the thing, if you're not there, but you're on Twitch streaming, I don't think he's, yeah, I, I'm then saying I he, can understand. Like, I wouldn't care, but he's I probably watching understand. the game, but I mean, you know, he's not like, not would you? I mean, I, I if you're going to watch it, then why not hop on the team bus and, and use that moment to help um, welcome in this new signing that we just brought in, who's probably going to be a starter for you. Like that seems like it's a moment to kind of galvanize and to be that leader on the field, the guy who's like, I want to win, you know, you're the, you're the speech guy. You're the, I want to win every game and we're a family and we're a team, blah, blah, blah. I would hope that he would go. Um, I don't care whether he does or not, but I, I would certainly hope that he would go. Uh, I would start Dejan. I probably wouldn't start chase just because it's an NISL team and you can, you can start a Preston, you can Preston, you can start Josh track and it's, it's still punch. It's still punching down, Like you could start the G2 USL team and it's still punching down. You could start the entire G2 team and Deja and you're punching way down. So it, it, I don't know, Drac, keep it easy. Drac for Kranis, Neil, Leardom probably uh, give him an opportunity to play a little bit. Sasha will be your captain. I feel like it would be Neil and um, oh my goodness, I'm blanking on his name now. Um, oh God, never mind. Keep going. I'll look it up. <laughs> I just Lamb? had a real like brain fart there. I don't know, I'm just I'm fascinated to know who you're talking about now. I feel like I can't help you. Zavaleta, Depew. Depew, Zavaleta, like those guys. I feel like you'll probably yeah, see them start over over for Kranis. I, I, I if those kids are healthy, like I would start them just because it's they're so it's such a there's still such a gap, but you don't want to lose. Like it's really important that we don't lose. That's what I mean. Like, and you guys guys like a Zavaleta or a Depew who's not getting really any minutes in the last like two, three weeks. We got the lucky pull. He's not great, but we got the lucky pull and we got the the lowest ranked team, the lowest league team in the draw that was left for our for our region. You, you don't want to blow it. And it's gonna be it's gonna be their World Cup final. Like you know they're coming at you. So yeah, I'm not I'm not opposed to playing Depew. I would I would probably like a Neil and Depew for Kranis and Depew. Um, but yeah, you can you play Zavaleta if you want. That's great. Uh leave them at right back. I hate to say play Kevin Cabral. I really, I hate to say play him. That kid could use some goals. <laughs> if this is, this is the, the, the moment to like put some in and get that confidence, man, let him score let him score nine goals against, yeah. against some, some semi-professionals and get his confidence back up. Um, it's, then it's, that's if, a guy you're, you're playing three games in, you know, seven days or whatever. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't, maybe you just don't play him on Saturday. Maybe you just, maybe, you maybe, that's, maybe, a justifi- you, maybe that's maybe that's justification. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's just case the rest of Saturday. Yeah. Uh play them both. Play play both brothers. You know, when was the last time we played two brothers, the Vireals? Um and I don't even brothers or like brothers. Well, we don't we don't play brothers. But uh, you got two in the center back, man. I don't know if if wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's your two right there. You got two in the center back. Uh, yeah. I don't I, I guess I would assume the two Vireals play, but I can't remember if they played together. Um but I would play Kevin. I I'd really, assume, I think, I really I'm, I'm pretty sure they play together at some point. I don't know. I really would play Kevin. I would play Kevin and it's, it doesn't seem fair. And it's, I don't even mean it to be disrespectful. I simply mean it so that he can, he can score 15 goals against these semi-professionals and get some confidence back. 
especially if the traveling fans can kind of get behind him and and he gets one or two or three and they get behind him and they're cheering for him and it it starts to remind him like hey this is what i'm supposed to be doing mm-hmm. um but i i would start him and- the, the likely outcome that he does play and then he does nothing is is probably higher than him scoring three goals but yeah that's the problem. If you start him and it's still trash and yeah. it's trash against semi-professionals in a cup match, that might be it. It, yeah, it might I've, be it. I'm, I'm leaning more. I'm leaning more towards that, but probably be the the probability of that. But the upside, the upside, as you say, you can play any of those G two kids and you're punching down because you're probably um, you're probably going to get a Grand Seer start. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But, but the, only, I, reason, the me, only reason I wouldn't for is me, the would only get, reason I wouldn't is you could you could play him on Saturday and you probably shouldn't play Kevin on Saturday almost no matter what. Almost no matter what he does, he probably shouldn't play. I on mean, Saturday. I feel like this is definitely gonna be a run for the guys who aren't like a Dunbar or you know, like guys like that. Yeah. Are, you're probably gonna get a, a Jonathan Klinsman as your as your starting keeper. Absolutely, yeah. So it's it's maybe even bring up Harvey, have him play. Probably Harvey and like a Sasha or something. Sasha should should start. Yeah, I would imagine Sasha start. Sasha should start in the middle with uh, Daniel Aguirre if he's uh, if he's fully fit. Just to have like that senior, you know, that that captain. He'll captain the side. That yeah. veteran, I yeah. imagine. Yeah, I imagine he's captain. But should be so, should be fun. Should be fun. It'll be interesting, man. I'm 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 looking forward to that match. Um. But yeah, so uh, let's get your predictions then. Or do you want to hear Pippi's first? Pippi's got to go first, yeah. Pippi's first? All right. Uh, Pippi's... Dogs on hot streak. <laughs> this is this is for the game against Dallas, by the way. Uh, I know. What if four points in two games? Man? Come on. Uh, Pippi has predicted a G's win, one nothing, and an Efrain Alvarez goal. Big big shout. Yeah. Um, I, I am as well predicting a, a G's win, which I was going to predict before the dog. For the record, but I'm taking a I'm taking two one against Dallas. I know we rarely score more than one goal, but I'm I'm hoping coming off of a smashing of Cal United strikers that the guys are feeling a little bit better, and uh, we can we can get even one more. So I'll take two one. Okay. And I will say, ooh, it's hard to pick a DP. Ooh, it's hard to pick a DP. Ooh, I might be changing this from two one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really, might. Be, uh, oh. Let's go Chicharito and Revolution. Okay. Yeah. You're all right with that? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, you got to be all right with that. I don't have to be all right with it. Hey, my soul is fine. My soul is perfectly <laughs> fine with it. Um, let's keep it going. I'm going to go 2 nothing. I said we keep another clean sheet. Oof. I said we keep another clean sheet. Shit, that's where I fucked up. That clean and, sheet. And I say a goal from Chicha. Chicha. And then I'll go with oof, that's that second one's hard. Um, first one, first one's hard. <laughs> first one's pretty difficult. Let's go with Koulibaly. I feel like he gets another one. Okay, he's due. Yeah, yeah. we'll do that. Two nothing. And then obviously Ben will hopefully send his into Tony, and maybe Tony will remind him to to send in a prediction or something. What's your open cup prediction? Oof, I feel like uh, I feel like we give one away. I feel like that happens, <laughs> but I think we still win like three one. I would hope. I would hope it's a little, little, little more convincing than that. But yeah, I'll take three, three, four, one somewhere, somewhere in. I just I, I don't want to take them for granted. Um, you know they're they're we're, especially we're going to be playing like a lot of like the B and you know, G2 kids, mm-hmm. uh, which I think they're still better than a lot of the players that they have on Cal, but Every, it should be everyone. <laughs> it should be it everyone. It should be everyone. Um, but, you know, these, these things happen sometimes. So, um, yeah, I'll say 3-1. Yeah. Okay. What about you? What do you think? You think we keep a clean sheet in that game? I'm hoping it's convincing. I'm hoping it's like a, it's a trouncing, but I could definitely see them stealing one. Um, like I would nothing. hope like a four. Yeah. I would hope like a four, one somewhere in that neighborhood Four nothing four, one. Um, I want us to, it should be so because they're so far down the pyramid, it should be so dominating and convincing that we're playing like a really high line, but I could see us playing a really high line of, you know, Depew and for or something, and then kind of playing a ball over the top, catching us. Um, 
or getting a set piece off of us and us, you know, us not quite paying attention the way we're supposed to be clearing it out properly and bang, they get one in. And then after yeah. that, we're just like piling pressure on. I feel like it's going to be one of those where like they get a shot off and Klinsman parries it, but it goes right to like one of their players and our defense is like falling asleep or something. And that, that's how it happens. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, let's move on to the lightning round. I did put out an Instagram post. Did you? I did. Yeah, I'm not um, doing, I haven't done any work for this show since I moved. Bro, bro it's fine, man. I, I did all that work today. I was I appreciate you. It's the end of the school year, and I'm pretty much done with all my projects I needed to get done. Okay. So I was pretty bored today. So I was able to get work done, actually. Like, not work as in, like, my job. Working is in the show. The only one that matters. Game we, hey, we could do a, a post-open, cup, uh, post-open cup recap tomorrow if you want. Did you see the the picture I put for the the post? By the way, I didn't even know you made a post. Oh, where's my camera? The other way, the other way, the other way. Oh God, that guy! I used to I loved him back then. That's bicycle. That's bicycle kick goal, Chris Klein. Yeah, yeah, it is. All right, uh, this one from our good friend uh, Toronto Dan uh, Gallagher Command uh, or Command. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, is Dejan fucking Vanny's wife? Why isn't he starting? Oh, that is what an opening question. Let's go. Let's get yeah. into it. Uh, no, he's not. He's not. He, he, why isn't he starting? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not, I'm less interested in why he's not starting and more interested in why he gets five or six or seven minutes at the end. Of yeah. The I, I, I get, there's a logical argument for him to not start games as much as everyone hates Cabral and, and, and Costa. And some of that at least dislike is legitimate and deserved he's the only real recognized backup forward for what is he 33 years old uh, for a 33 year old poacher with, with an injury history. It, there is logic in him, not in him, not starting games. The fact that he can't get more than, than eight minutes in a match is genuinely concerning to me. That's, that's more of a problem. And I think that comes down less to, um, you know, adultery and, comes down more to there is a designated player mandate that comes from the president and the technical director and you ever see like that's just the way it is i just looked up chicha's birthday or his age Mm -hmm. does it always seem weird now that like these guys are like born around your birthday or the same age as you like before we were like the young guys so we're just like oh you know they're they're young (laughs) we're the young up-and-comers now we're like we're at retirement age yeah (laughs) what do you mean so that's so Chicha's birthday is June 1st of 88, mm-hmm. which means I am, what, three weeks older than him? He's a, uh, yeah. Oh. That's just, it's just a humbling moment right now where I'm like, what have I done with my life? This is what I'll tell you. And this is not, this is not me saying something to you. Uh, take this. You're, you're choosing your words very I'm dancing very, around this. Yeah, yeah, a little bit take this as, as take this as I'm saying it, not as how it's going to sound. Okay. My doctor, after I lost the weight and I went to the doctor again, he was like, man, I didn't think you would do it. And I was like, cause he gave me a number. He was like, I want you to try to get down to around this number. And I said, first of all, fuck you. You No, that's what he told me. But I, I was like, he said, I want you to just keep this in your head, try to get down around this number. And then I was like, okay. And COVID hit. So I didn't see him for over a year. And then the next time I saw him, he was like, oh, you actually got down to the number. And I was like, well, yeah, he asked me to. So I got to work on it. And he was like, well, most people after 35 don't do it. Like 35 is the cutoff. So for most of the guys that he's like, you need to start losing weight. You need to take care of yourself. If they've passed the age of 35, most of them never do it. They just gain the weight and they keep putting weight on and then they, they die early. So like whenever someone calls him fat or out of shape, like some party has got to be like, he's an athlete and yeah. they're calling him fat. Oh like, yeah. No. When you always see those, those reports of like players are like, Oh yeah, he's out of shape. I'm like, I would cut off a toe to be that yeah, out of shape. I would give two inches off my dick to, to be that level of out of shape. Yeah. I'd be negative, but you know, whatever, it's fine. You know, Hey, look, we're, we're all different, Ed. We're all, we're all different. We're, we're all, all different special different. boys. You know, God loves us all, man. It's fine. You know, there's always time. Yeah, there's still time. But yeah, like my if I was if I was in if I lost seventy pounds and was in peak physical fitness, 
I would still be too old to be a soccer player. Mm-hmm. Like, believe me, I, I I think about it more than I should. I just and, I saw and I just saw it, and I'm like, oh my, I'm three weeks older than him. I'm that's strange. Here's the craziest part. Is this is the crazier part, right? Zlatan is seven years older than that dude. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Like what? Yeah, it's, it's insane. All right, this one from uh, Ruben Yeskas. I don't know what this question is. Um, you probably maybe you can clarify this for me. Are you guys glad the team is pushing P? I don't know if you can. You it's like a P on. with the square. I don't know. Hold on, let me look at it again. We're pushing. Oh, pushing P. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> like we're we're putting pressure on them. We're we're we're. That's my understanding of it. Like we're we're putting where we play my understanding of give me a second my understanding get back at us and 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 so we can clarify that question because i don't understand what's going on my understanding of pushing p and my understanding of how the galaxy is playing putting those two things together would be are you are you glad that we we apply pressure on teams we play like we play a high line we we stay on top of guys we 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 play a high press uh, we give the ball away in general. We try to run back and get it back immediately. Sometimes we you know, give up fouls and get yellow cards and what have you. But we play a real aggressive forward pressing style. Yes, I, I'm glad to see that. It, it seems high energy. The problem with that in general is like we're not great defensively and we have some less than – fit players to kind of run that scheme for too long. So it, it ends up drawing early substitutions on players that you would imagine could, could stay out longer, but because they're probably not in the best fitness that they could be um, that high pressure and that high line costs us substitutions late in the game. And we don't have the deepest roster to kind of um, supplement those guys. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's what that's what pushing P means. If 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 I got it right, if you got it right, I'm, if you got again, it, again, I'm I'm 35, so I don't know. I don't know what these young kids are talking about these days, man. Who knows? We don't know. Um, this one from Art from Lars: Should any G2 player? We kind of uh, talked about this earlier. Should any G2 players get the start versus Cal? Um, and he mentions Judd. Zubar, Neil, Judd. Yeah, Judd, Drac, Neil for Kranis, uh, Klinsman. I think, I think one Drac or Judd might be. I think Drac might be injured right now. Oh, okay. Well, one, of them, one of them were, yeah. If if Drac um, is out, then I would love to see uh 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 what's his name Chase Casper play. Uh, I w- I would like to see him play if Ju- if it's Drac. Um, yeah, I think Judd came off the bench a couple days ago or for the the last G two games. So it makes yeah. sense. Um, uh, but yeah, we we should definitely Johnny Perez a hundred percent. We should be squeezing some of these guys in there to get them mm. get them some first team exposure. All right. Uh, from our our good friend Sharky fourteen. Uh, would you shave your head for Cabral to get on the score sheet? Which, I mean, it might be a little easier for you to do that. I just cut all my hair off, which my, w- my <laughs> wife doesn't like, but the humidity here gets to like 70%. Uh, and she cuts my hair. So I had enough of that shit. I, you know, every barbershop here has a two week, uh, two week out appointment. Damn. So like you can't, yeah, you can't just stroll in. It's they, it's it's a uh, it's a whole situation. So yeah, uh, I I would shave my head. But It'd be like, what if what if you had like an emergency, like you had? Oh, I'm getting an interview, and they're gonna, it's in like four days or whatever. That's not their fucking problem. Well, you can do walk-ins. You just have to wait. Like you just have to sit. You show up, and if no, if the guy is late, or if somebody finishes early, and they can squeeze you in or something like that. But you like you can't just walk in and get a, a regular bar bar t- or a bartender, a regular barber. Like if you walk in, you might you might get the new guy who doesn't have any appointments yet, um, or you can sit and wait and see if somebody doesn't show up or shows up late or something like that. But you can't just stroll into a barbershop here. Okay. Uh, would I? No, but I hope he gets on the score sheet. <laughs> uh, another Cabral question from our good friend Dago. Um, Cabral, too early to buy out his contract and ship him out? No, we won't. We won't because we we burn tens of millions of dollars on designated players that don't work already, but no, we should cut bait on him and move on. Would you cut? Okay. If you had, cause you have one choice to cut a contract, cut a Cabral or cut a uh, Cabral. Uh, his is longer. A Costa. I would, I would cut Cabral this season and I would cut Costa at the beginning of next season. Okay. There you go. That's uh, honestly what I would do. Uh, this one from our last which, one, from- which, which, which again, if you, if you pay both of those guys out, you could have afforded an NWSL team just on the cost of those two. 
you could have afforded your own women's team just, uh, you know, and put it in your own stadium just on the cost of those two guys. We're going to, we're going to move on from that topic because I don't have the music to play for your your rants. We don't have to. He doesn't have to do a rant. But if you didn't pay Geo and you just kept that money in the bank, but he's remember he's the president because of his genius executive business decisions. Yeah, of course, man. He's a he's a creative genius. Um, yes, he is the Kanye West of, of MLS <laughs> the presidents. I started watching that dude's documentary. It's fascinating. Uh, is it the one that's gen- on Netflix? Genius. Yeah, it's really really interesting. Okay. They paid. They paid. They paid his friend. Uh, I think his friend got $20 million for the footage of Kanye. And like, he had just started filming when Kanye West was nobody, but they need the footage to put that documentary together. And he had, he owned it all. So like he set just cause he started filming like his loser body, essentially what Ben did for us. Yeah. But Ben's not making $20 million off of us. Who wants the, any of this shit? It's on YouTube for free. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff that they see though, you know, there's the back, yeah. you know, uh, the behind the content, scenes right? oh yeah the backdoor content backdoor content i think it's what they call it backdoor content nine um yeah because there's there's already eight of them out there yeah uh this is the last one from stay in trucha uh cross balls or long shots what do we need more of uh, the way the way we should be set up cross balls i would imagine cross balls yeah but yeah uh, good ones that car, that Cabral cross that we just had to Chicha, yeah. usually, usually what you get out of uh, out of Julian Araujo, typically what you get out of Julian Araujo, and what we have most consistently gotten out of Raheem Edwards, which I expect to see more of with him playing at left wing, definitely a cross ball. All right, there you go. That's it. Man. Anything else before we uh, get out of here, sir? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, everybody, be nice to each other. You know, remember that people who work for the Galaxy are still human beings, yeah. just like you. Remember, if if someone spoke to your mom like that because of the job she's doing at work and the fact that they don't like it, you would want to rip their throat out. So try to remember, there are still people just like you, just like all of your loved ones. They're still human beings and you have no idea what they're going through. So if you're being, for whatever reason, insanely cruel to somebody and they decide to kill themselves or they decide to, to do something nuts, you know what's going to happen? You're going to go, oh my God, I didn't know. Just try to do that in advance. That's how you be a good person. Being a good person just means you're thinking about the other people as if they're people before something bad happens. Is that nice? Is that good? That seems fair. Thank hashtag client out. Hashtag client out. Hashtag leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Squadcast96. Old man I, Chris. What was that? <laughs> Old man Chris. <laughs> <Yeah. done. laughs> uh, YouTube.com slash the Squadcast pod. Uh, email us at squadcast96 at gmail.com. You can also leave us a voicemail slash text message if you are so inclined uh, at 310-698-9337. That's 310-698-9337. On that note, Chris, mm-hmm. I will talk to you next week, hopefully. Well, let's hope so. Let's hope so. All right. We'll see you next week. Be, be kind to each other. Be nice. Don't be dicks. Bye.